Hey everyone, Brad here with Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia, aka Torment. Just giving you a heads up, this episode ran really long. It's an hour and 50 minutes. Hope you guys can get through it. It's got some great stories. Actually introduces how our actual names came about, the art alter egos. Got some great stories for that. Didn't get to go to the weight challenge. The episode ran just way too long. Didn't get through to our, our trivia question. Just wanted to let you guys know. We'll make up for that next week. We'll be giving away another signed prize. Hope you guys enjoy the episode again. Happy hunting. Hello and welcome to episode 11 of Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. This is Brandon. This is Brad. This is Nick. And Aaron. Special guest, Aaron Gerwer. Would you like to introduce yourself to the audience? Sure. My name is uh, Aaron. I'm an old friend of Brad, Brandon, and Nick in town visiting from Philadelphia, and I'm just uh, sitting in. And we are currently podcasting from Las Vegas, Nevada. Oh, fuck yeah. Uh, Nick was gracious enough to put this thing together, this whole trip. I sent out invites uh, about, it seems like 12 years ago, (laughs) and uh, just waiting for the day to come, and it finally arrived, and we're out here on vacation for a week. I wasn't at first gonna be able to attend, but then I timed my San Diego vacation uh, to my sister-in-law Jenny's house just so I could ride up here with these guys, stay a couple of days, and then I'll meet my wife. I'm going to go Greyhound, meet them up in San Bernardino, and then we're going to go over to San Diego. Uh, I'm glad I was able to make the trip. Yeah, sounds good. <clears throat> I did want to clarify a few questions we had from Episode 9 uh, before we get into our regular format. We had In our top five honorable mentions... Brad, uh, his honorable mention was... What was the list? The top five list. Oh, uh, top five TV show characters oh, yeah. pre-2000. <laughs> John Stamos. And uh, one of Brad's honorable mentions was Mike Seaver, only because his friend was named Boner. <laughs> and I had asked, didn't he die? And we didn't really know. So I did some research, a little digging. Joshua Koenig. A.K.A. Boner. Uh, his name was... <laughs> Richard Boner Stromboni, or Staboni, uh, he went missing February 14th, 2010. Uh, search party went out, couldn't find him. In February 25th, 2010, friends and family actually found him in Stanley Park, downtown Vancouver, hanging from a tree. Uh, his parents said he took his own life. It wasn't a lynching? No. <laughs> he took his own life. Uh, another tie-in we have, uh, we have a correction. I had uh, said that Steve Urkel was <clears throat> had a girlfriend, uh, Maxine. Her actual name was Myra. Uh, another correction. Maxine but, was uh, Laura Winslow's friend. Yeah. Brad had uh, said he liked the song Bella Lugosi's Dead from The Collector and from Goth Talk. He said it was by a group called Dahas, but it's actually Bahas. <laughs> Dyslexic version. Of <laughs> like John Bovey. Yeah. <laughs> uh, next we have uh, just a few more. Uh, actually, one more. A.C. Slater. Brad's number three, I believe, was Zach Morris. Only, And it's, we talked about his friend A.C. Slater. The A.C. actually stood for Albert Clifford. Not all cool, like he had intended. I thought he said it stands for all cool. Oh, he did, but it's Albert Clifford. So that's uh, some uh, call-outs for the last episode. Uh, So let's go ahead and go into treasure hunting this week. Wait a second. You guys snubbed a very important character. I brought it to your attention. (laughs) You guys want to say something about why you snubbed Mr. Al Bundy? Uh, I just forgot. I I would like to say... I, I. I say I was gonna save him for the top five TV dads. I was gonna use that excuse, but I just forgot to. <laughs> and and when I did my list, I went based out of pure memory, and I was just trying to think of uh, people who I watched a lot. I did watch Murder Children like every episode, but he just did not come to mind. If I would have went on the internet and said you know top whatever sitcoms, he would have definitely been made my list, but. I just feel bad for forgetting him. He's the reason I put my hands down my pants when I watch TV <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> Very comfortable. <laughs> All right, I just did, wanted to give a quick shout out to Al Bundy. Aaron, did you know who Brad and I's number one favorite TV show character was? Um, we actually had the same one. 
Let me think about this. Think Oiko's Greek yogurt. What's that? Oiko's Greek yogurt. <laughs> oh, uh, Uncle Jesse. Yeah, oh, yeah. He was our number one. And, and Nick and both of our, uh, our wives and even his wife were like, you like Uncle Jesse? That's where he's your number one? And we're like, yeah. So Your man, number one favorite character of all time was Uncle Jesse? Pre-2000. Pre-2000s. Jeez. <laughs> Basically all time. Mine probably would have been the cousin who lived in the van from Step by Step. That was my number two. <laughs> I feel like they served the same function. <laughs> Cody was number two on my list. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm glad we, we were thinking alike here. So, treasure hunting this week. Um, Nick, did you do any treasure hunting? Uh, I cheated when I got your guys' prizes, so I, I went the Amazon route, but... They're still kick-ass prizes. Oh, yeah, hell yeah. Uh, we just wrapped up episode 10. Uh, Brandon still has a sore butthole. Yeah, it still burns a little bit like it stings. <laughs> and uh, we got baseball stars for Nintendo, which is so tight because I'm going to I'm gonna display that. That's I've been looking for that game. And I got a ac- Troy, fig- Troy Aikman action <laughs> figure with two different cards, and it's just so tight looking. Uh, <laughs> I thought John Elway was the best quarterback oh, of all time. No, no it's, it's Troy. Troy. <laughs> <Hands down. laughs> no one else wore the um, eye face paint like he did. <laughs> I guess if you're going by eye face paint. <laughs> and by all time coolness. Um, but I did want to give a quick shout out to Heath Ellenberg, who actually won the sign Troy Aikman copy uh, <laughs> out in Georgia. Big thanks to him. He's been supporting uh, the podcast, and uh, you know we we love the feedback. We love the support. Yeah. So actually, I I did some treasure hunting, even though it wasn't for what I was looking for. I actually went to the Goodwill and I found a Where's Waldo book. I was like, let me get something for the kids since I can't find anything good for me. I got a Where's Waldo book for Naja, and for my son, he really likes Transformers. So I got him this big bumblebee figure. It's about 14 inches tall. I've seen that before. Uh, 2.99. So I took I took it home. I gave Naja the book, and she really enjoyed it. I gave Willie the toy, and he's like, "I'm too old to play with this." <laughs> so do you put it on eBay? No, I I was like, "You better display that in your room." So uh, so he's got it in his room. Like, this is a token of my love for you. Yeah, <laughs> just shit on it. Yeah. So so then I went back. Uh, treasure hunting again uh, a, f- a few days later and I got Naja this stuffed toy it's like a lemur it's pink and purple I knew she would love it she fell in love with it gave it names put earrings in its ears um, and Willie I decided to get him something else but this time I just got him a pack of playing cards I said toys are too old for you and just threw him a pack of playing cards <laughs> I said learn to play poker then so you know what color World Waldo book did you get him what color I don't know. There's just the Where's Waldo book. There's blue, red, and yellow. I think it was either blue or yellow. Because the yellow one actually has a beach scene, and it has a dog running away with a woman's bra. <laughs> she's up like this, and you could like see the, the shape of her breast. Uh-huh. I found that in fourth grade, and I was like, <gasps> you could almost see the nipple. <laughs> it was the Great Waldo Search. That's what the, the name of the book was called. Okay. I looked for the beach scene. Okay. So I actually had a big score... Walked into Dimple Records. Uh, I I went for the past two weeks. I went every day. Uh, last week I had a big score, which I uh, posted on the site. I uh, had the titles hidden, so I guess I'll go ahead and start revealing them one by one. Can't look. I'm very excited <laughs> and jealous at the same time. The first one was kind of a giveaway. You kind of saw the back of it. Maybe you thought it was a Genesis game. A black Super Nintendo game. Killer Instinct! (laughs) Combo Breaker! That's tight. (laughs) Have you guys played this? Of course. Yeah. With, uh, who was your favorite character to play as? I don't remember any of the characters to be honest. I remember what they looked like. Was there like a metal guy? That was Fulgore. Yeah. It was Fulgore. And then there was, uh, Orchid. Jade Orchid? Yeah. She was, yeah, I I liked, uh, who was the wolf? Saber? Timberwolf? Timberwolf? Saber, maybe? Saber Wolf? Saber, Saber Wolf. Wasn't that the game that had like a heavy metal soundtrack? Or is that, am I thinking of a different game? It might be. Here's the next one. Uh, NES cart. Oh, there's a security tag. Yeah. Did you try to take this off? No. Uh. 
<laughs> Arch <laughs> Rivals. I don't ever I don't remember ever playing this game. Remember it had Tyrone from the um that one cartoon that had Quirk in it? Oh Tyrone right. was from Arch Rivals and oh, okay. Bigfoot and the dude from NARC. Mm, and um Iron Sword, Wizards and Warriors. Yeah. That was a sleepover staple for me. Oh. Uh, yeah. Tight. It's based on an arcade game, it says. Oh, another Nintendo game. Oh, Ninja Turtles. The reason nice. I picked this one up is because this is our original. Oh, okay. The, the label's all faded. The one I got there is crisp and clean. Oh, cool. So we got a almost new looking Ninja Turtles now. That's tight. So you get this one or something. What? Maybe we yeah, that. we'll give that one away. Okay, so Ninja Turtles, if you give that away, we'll sign it too. More? Super three ninety nine Super Nintendo. Judge Dredd! This game is so tight. Have you guys played I this? Played I am the law. This <laughs> game is tight. I, it's real fun. It kind of plays like Alien 3. Uh, you get to fight the four judges, like the four evil judges. The judges of death or something. One's judge death, yeah. Yeah, and it's real fun. I really enjoy that game. This is a hard game. And you only have a certain number of contingents. If you lose, you have to start all over. Mm. Now, this one I'm just going to leave up on the table because you're going to know what it is as soon as you take it off. Mm. <laughs> you got this from Dimple? I got it from Dimple. What the heck? Yeah. Doom for PlayStation. It's quite, quite some packaging there. Why is the box so... That's how the old PlayStation games work. Yeah. Oh, wow. This was original. It was like a PC kind of. Yeah. Have you played this? No, not yet. Hmm. It looks tight. That's you got an awesome score. I know. I couldn't believe it. I almost popped a boner. <clears throat> and then you say you didn't pay much for it. Like you thought it was. Yeah. Much. They have prices on here: three ninety nine. Uh, this one was four ninety nine, three ninety nine, and five ninety nine. That's six ninety nine. They only run uh, rung up a dollar ninety nine each. Wow. wow. And and I was uh, contemplating on getting it because uh, I was trying to save some money for the Vegas trip. And I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm just going to get it. I brought it up there, uh, threw them down, and she's like, okay, your total is nine ninety nine. I was like, okay, oh. okay. Here's my card. <laughs> and did you want to use any points today? I was like, nope. Fuck that. <laughs> wow, that's that's amazing. That's like one of the best scores of all time. Aaron, do you do any treasure hunting from now not time and time again? I think the last thing I found at uh, the Goodwill was like a blazer. Oh, that's tight. What's a blazer? <laughs> <laughs> Make an <A>. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I, I'll normally get records or books that I find um, from the from the thrift store. I found uh, a few anthologies. Um, they usually, usually never have comic books, which would be something I'd like to grab, but you can rarely find those at an antique store. It's funny. At the Goodwill by my work, they have comic books, and they had an issue of Spider-Man 200. Mm -hmm. It had the Green Goblin on the front. I was going to pick it up, but it was in horrible condition. What I do find quite often is records, because um, I, I like records, and I play records. Um, but generally, they're from very old people who have died and where their relatives are, just get rid of their record collection. So yeah. it's a lot of Lawrence Welk <clears throat> and crap like that. But every once in a while, you'll run across like a Blue Note Records anthology. It was a great jazz anthology yeah. or uh, a cool uh, classical record. Like I've got some Stravinsky records that I've that I found. Um, that's about the extent. I went to Thrift Town, uh, not Thrift Town, the, the D Deseret Industries. <laughs> and they have a whole bunch of records there. I was flipping through them. But I saw... What I thought was a record that had the four Beatles on it, the original, which like goes for like ten thousand. Oh, wow. But it was um, I can't remember like some weak band. Uh, my heart skipped it because it's the same layout. Because I saw it on Storage Wars one time. Someone found one of those Beatle records, but it, it was Fleetwood Mac, I think it was. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> so I was, I was like, oh. I did find uh, a copy of Akon's Convicted, <laughs> first CD that I was uh, bumping in my car. <laughs> for a while. <laughs> is he a rapper? He is a singer rapper. Hmm. So like he yeah. raps in an appealing melodic tone. Hmm. Okay. So uh we went ahead and played Mega Man four this past week. Uh pretty hard game. Uh so what do you guys think of it? <clears throat> I liked it a lot. Uh I actually have never beat that game. I finally went through it, <clears throat> didn't know what uh, boss order to beat him in, 
So what I did was I went, um, and I have the fewest notes here. I just wrote down my boss order. Uh, drill man, skull man, dust man, dive man, toad man. Apparently none of those people kill each other, so I used a <laughs> mega buster on all of them. Oh, wow. And I got to toad man, and I'm like, all right, one of these other people has got to beat toad man because I've got four of them. Nope, <laughs> didn't. So, um, actually, drill man, I found out, does beat toad man, but I just must not have hit him with it. Then I went Bright Man, Ring Man, and Feral Man is last. Um, got the two uh, power ups, the wire and the balloon, mm -hmm. and that it's been a few weeks, so I didn't write down any more notes. So oh. I, I'm pretty much out. I might chime in, but <laughs> I'm out at this point. <laughs> yeah, I, I also started playing it a couple of weeks ago as well. I, I got past all eight of the bosses, and then uh, I set it down. And I didn't play it again until last night. Uh, <laughs> like uh, like Brad, I had never beaten this game. Unfortunately, I still haven't beaten the game. I, I tried really hard last night to beat it. I was up till 2.30. I had to get up at 5.30 to, to start this drive out to Vegas. And I just, I had to get a couple hours of sleep, so I had to put it down. I, I got all the way past Wiley's stage one, but I, I just could not continue anymore. Uh, I did write down my uh, boss order. I went Toad Man, Bright Man, Pharaoh Man, Ring Man, Dust Man, Skull Man, Dive man and drill man. Mm. So, <clears throat> I, I I will definitely beat it eventually, probably as soon as I get back home, just cause just to prove it to myself that I can. But uh, yeah, that's so. I mean, I'll, I I look forward to uh, to hearing from your notes just to kind of refresh my memory a little bit. Okay, so I first wanted to bring up that part two, Mega Man two introduced the slide technique. No, yes. three did. I think that's right. Three did. Oh. And then, Oh yeah, I do have three right there. Yeah, and the part uh, four introduced the charge of the Mega Buster. Yeah, I love that. That's yeah, that's tight. So um, this is what I did. I was looking at the eight bosses, and I knew this was going to be rough. So I said, "Which one of these characters looks most like a bitch?" <laughs> so I went to Toad Man, and I hated the level right from the start. The rain that um, pushes you back when oh, you jump, fuck that, but... uh, and then <laughs> and then there was waterways. Like uh, if you stood that stood on like the path of water that flowed off the edge, you'd float that way. Right. Uh, or if you stood in the middle, you could only jump a little bit. Uh, there were I think some giant snails. The giant that, snails that the eyes. Yeah. Like, that that thing tore me up. I was like, <laughs> you little fucker. <laughs> yeah. So not only did you have to deal with the water pushing you back and forth, but also these giant snails that you had to shoot like six or seven charged mega busters to kill. Yeah. So. Uh, what happened then is I didn't get a single power up through that whole level. I died, and I was like, it shows you the password. And I looked at the password, and I was like, why is it so complicated? There's a password spot at A3, A5, D1, E3, F5. I was like, this is just the beginning of the game. Why does they have such a difficult password? I didn't get it. You so, didn't find an answer. You just, like, I was just—I right. was sitting there thinking. I was like, "Why are there so many dots at just for the start of the game? Usually, there'd only be like one dot, right. but there are like six or seven. Yeah. Like, Fuck it, I'm not looking this up. Yeah. Oh, so, uh, so I came. I uh, let's try Toad Man again. He still looks like a bitch. <laughs> so I get through the whole stage this time, the second round without dying, and I'm sitting there like fighting him. I said, "Is this guy a bitch still?" no he's not a bitch yet because he does this rain dance move that if you're far away he dances and the rain he uh, shakes his hips and his the, robot hip yeah and the rain comes down and hits you and you're like how am I supposed to beat this guy and so I get up closer and he just hops around yeah. so I ended up just uh, staying close to him and he just hops around then my definite answer was yes, he was a bitch. That's funny because you know I never once saw his attack. Uh, the first time I saw him, I walked <laughs> up to him and I started shooting at him, and he would just jump from one side to the other. And mm -hmm. as long as you just kept kept close to him and shot him, he wouldn't attack at all. Yeah. So I never even saw his attack until I used it myself. Mm -hmm. And right off the bat, you get the Russian Marine. Yep. So I, I was sitting there thinking to myself, what what is logical that acid would be? Of course, acid deteriorates metal. But I'm th trying to think Mega Man wise here. Let's. I said, does it be perhaps bone? You know, bone Skull Man. Maybe it takes away his bone. Uh, so I uh, start Bone Man's level. 
right off the bat you get like two energy tanks. And yeah, I was pretty tight. I was pretty surprised. I was like, huh. So um I get to Skullman. Acid does not work on Skullman. I <laughs> die. He kills me. So I'm like, oh, whatever. So does he give you the rush jet, Skullman? I don't remember which bosses give you which uh, versions of the rush. Cause I have, yeah, he must because I ended up beating him and I got the rush jet. So it must have been Skullman giving me the rush jet. So I beat him with pellets and or Mega Buster and I got the Skull, the uh, rush jet. I was like, I got the Marine and the jet right off the bat. Uh, let's see. Then I had this um, vague memory pop into my head that for some reason I thought Brightman was going to be weak against the rain. So I hit Brightman up. His level was pretty easy and found out that, yeah, the um, rain does beat Brightman. Uh, so then I said, let's try Ringman. Uh, tried Ringman. Beat him. I was like, okay, pretty easy. Feral man. Motherfucker. What? <laughs> Ring man was a bitch for me. <laughs> he gave me so much, so many troubles. Just cause he's really fast. And he's, he's, throw, a, he's like quick man. Yeah, he, he is. He, his weapons even the same. He comes and goes, huh? What What was really difficult about it was, any time he threw it, it was like almost impossible to not get hit. Yeah, I remember that. It, you You jump over the first one, and you Mega Man doesn't land quick enough for him to jump over it when it flies back to to um. The ring man. It was, that was a tough battle for me. Oh, I'm sorry. And I meant to say, I didn't beat Skullman and you don't get the rest jet from Skullman. You get it from Drillman. Because mm -hmm. I have right here, Drill equals bitch dash Mega Buster. So I must have <laughs> beat him with my Mega Buster and he was pretty <laughs> easy. Uh, so after Ring Man, I went to Feral Man. Oh, and I got the B. That's where you get the B power of the balloon. Mm -hmm. Right, the, the, the level is like a desert. Mm-hmm. Which makes sense because it's Feral Man, of course. Uh, th that, that level was funny to me because it had a lot of aspects of uh, other popular games at that time. Like, at the very beginning of the level, there was this, like, fly-looking thing that was, like, dropping coins on your head that mm -hmm. reminded me of the marshes in uh, Zelda 2. Yeah. You, you know what I'm mm -hmm. talking about? Yeah. It looked exactly like that. I was like, what the hell? You know, I thought I was in Super Mario Brothers 2. That was the other thing. It was, like, some, it was like Mario Brothers 2 and Zelda 2 and Mega Man 4. Because mm -hmm. what, the, what the level is, is it's like quicksand that swallows you, and of course, if you don't jump, it's just, you're going to die. <laughs> so, so I ended up beating him. Uh, I got the balloon in that level, which teleport. I thought you were going to spell out beat, B-E-A-T, but you just get the balloon. <laughs> um, and I didn't know what, I didn't even realize I had it until like six levels in. <laughs> and I was like, oh, what's this balloon thing? <laughs> Uh, so then I went uh, back to Skullman, got two more energy tanks, um, and found out that he was weak against Dustman, who I'd beat prior. So I beat Ferroman, Dustman, and then uh, back to Skullman. Next was Diveman. That's where you get the wire after the second whale. Did you get the wire? Oh, the one that shoots up, uh -huh. and up straight up? Yeah. Yeah, I, I walked by and I saw that little pit. I was like, there's got to be something down there. Yeah. And it fell in. I was like, hey, you get the W. <laughs> uh, dive man as we get against skull man and then let's see okay dr c's castle uh you you're stuck in the icy snow i the slinkies come after you they take a lot of life if you hit you uh some other notes i have i use i use this, the hell out of rest jet to get past past uh most of the pits and there is a, a moth uh, as a boss the first boss was like a giant moth, mm -hmm. and I remember that Ring Man for Ring some Man, reason. Yeah. Ring Man worked really well against yeah. that guy. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how I remembered that, but uh, that just clicked to use Ring Man. Level two, uh, there was a security room. The boss <laughs> where that <laughs> they were like, poof, poof. oh security yeah. room shit. <laughs> and um, I found out that Dust Man was supposed to be used to kill that. Even no one. <laughs> Motherfucker. I guess I have problems with these freaking security rooms. Cause <laughs> Mega Man 2, I had the hardest time defeating the security room in uh, Dr. Wily's castle. But this one, yeah, you're right. It comes in three parts, and you have to, like, dodge it the first couple times. And then the, the third time when it comes along, you can jump in there and, and attack the security room. But I had the hardest time with that. There's this little... It looks like a, a pill that, that shoots at you. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's pretty big. Even if, like, you're... You're walking the complete opposite direction of where that pill is shooting at. 
it still hits you a good percentage of the time, so you got to be really quick. Mm -hmm. I had a, I had a tough time with that guy. And it sucks that there's little conveyors you have to platforms yeah. you have to get on that go up and down in order to reach it. Right. I hated that boss. I, I mean, hate it too. Who who would have known it was against Dustman? I, I didn't know. I just got lucky and after a few guesses, and mm -hmm. that's what I did too. Yeah. Uh, then level three was the uh, spider bosses. Um, I just used the drills on it because I had no other option. I said three hits of the drills will kill each spider, I believe, three or six. And it, was, it wasn't too bad. Just stayed on the middle platform and shot drills at it. Yeah, that guy was much easier than the, the security room, for sure. Yeah, and then after that came Dr. Cossack. Uh, he's, I believe he's only invulnerable to Dustman. Yeah, he, he still. It only takes away about four lives when you hit him, but uh, still. Uh, it seems like to to me, it seemed like most of the the bosses were most vulnerable to either Dust Man or Quick Man. That's or not Quick Man, but a uh, Ring Man. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Those two weapons seem to be the most popular in terms of uh, what the bosses were weak against. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, then <laughs> after Doctor Cossack, Proto Man comes down with the little boy or girl. I don't know what it is. <laughs> And uh, come to find out, Dr. Cossack was only fighting against Mega Man because Wily had the kid hostage. So Proto Man uh, saves the kid, and then Dr. Wily comes out, and you get to go through Dr. Wily's castle again. And I actually uh, beat this game before Brandon did, and I turned it off when I got to Wily's castle, thinking, oh, I could just start there. Yeah. No fucking <laughs> way. <laughs> I turned it off, put the password in the next day. Started back at Dr. Kosiak's Kossi level, <laughs> and I was like, oh, that sucks. And then Brandon, he sent me a message that said something like, just beat Kosiak's level, I'll try Wiley's tomorrow or something, and I just purposely didn't respond to <laughs> get out of that same experience. <laughs> yeah, so... I thought it was interesting, uh, when Proto Man came down, Wiley said something in like, Oh, you betrayed me, yeah. Proto Man, or something like that. And I thought that was interesting because I actually didn't know that Proto Man was uh, was working for Wily. Yeah. yeah. So then you go through Wily's castle. I think only three levels. Yeah. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Should have just stayed up another half hour and done it. Yeah. I got I got through level one, but go ahead. Uh, I believe the first boss was like the master hard hat guy, as a giant hard hat. Yeah, that was yeah. cool. That was yeah. cool to see him as a boss. Yeah, he was pretty. He was pretty cool. Again, he was weak against Ring Man. Though. Yeah, he was. Mm -hmm. See, it's, it, a lot of the bosses were Ring Man or Dust Man. And then the next level, I have down the Trash Compactor. Do you remember that boss? No. Neither do I, but <laughs> apparently it was weak against Ring Man as well. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember what that Trash Compactor was, but I remember it giving me kind of a hard time. Uh, and then uh, after that, the, you get the Boss Gauntlet, and I wrote down the order of uh, who's weak against what. Uh, dive man beats that boss gauntlet gave me trouble because dive man i was kept dying on him dive man's a bitch but uh, he's weak against the skull yeah. barrier but you gotta like stand right next to him if he touches you it takes away like a third of your life i always fought him first when i did this boss gauntlet i said i've got to get rid of that guy first <laughs> so dive man beats drill man toad man beats bright man Oh, Brightman, if that fool touches you, he takes away like a third of your life. He's tough. I had a hard time with him. Yeah, Brightman is a bitch. Even with, uh, I think he's the one that's vulnerable to Toadman, mm -hmm. like the rain. Yeah. Even with that, when you shoot that Rain Man ability, it takes like two or three seconds for it to activate. Yeah. And it doesn't even, once Brightman is hit by it, it doesn't even stun him. He just keeps, he yep. just keeps going. Yeah. It takes down life, but it, do, it doesn't stop him. You don't have a second to recover. You just have to continue dodging him. Yeah, Dust Man beats Skull Man, Skull Man beats Dive Man, Dive Man's a bitch, Drill Man beats Toad Man, Ring Man beats Dust Man, Pharaoh Man beats Ring Man, Bright Man beats Pharaoh Man. Yeah, if you're fighting Toad Man and he starts shaking his hips, if you throw the Dust Drill at him, or, or the Drill Bomb at him, he just like, he stops it. Mm -hmm. He doesn't, he doesn't get to use his move. Really? Because that move that he uses, is, uh, you can't dodge it. It automatically hits you. Mm -hmm. Did either of you try to fight uh, Pharaoh Man without Bright Man? No. Bright Man is fucking Let me see. insane, dude. Yeah, once you use Bright Man's ability, is actually an upgrade from Flash Man. Right, because you, you could shoot. actually shoot. Yep. And you could just freeze Feral Man and just be like, 
shooting him all the live long day. It didn't work on a lot of the bosses, but Feral Man, I, it did work on him. That was like the <clears> only way that I could even fathom beating him. Yeah, I remember that. And you I just had to button mash. And I uh, wrote down on here, um, I did beat him, but I only had two bars of life remaining, and I ran out of the. Oh, really? Yeah. Without Bright Man? No, I beat him with Bright Man. Like, I ran out of Bright Man. Uh, and then uh, I had to I had to fight him with my pellets, and he obliterated me until I had two bars left. I was able to wow. do a final shot. It was rough. Yeah, he's so fast. Yeah. And then the Wily stage, the form one is real easy. I can't remember what I used, but the form two, I was getting so frustrated because I did not know how to beat him. Hmm. I had to call Brad. I said, "How in the fuck do you beat Wily stage two? And he said, Wait, do we want to tell Nick? Do you care? No, I'm fine. Okay. I, I prefer it so I don't have to okay. be pissed off. Like that anyway. Honestly, <laughs> I had no idea how to hit this fucker either. He's floating in a giant skull. There's one little blue orb way up top. Don't even know. It doesn't even tell you in the game. And how no, use. nothing reaches him. Even like acid, that doesn't even hurt him. Uh -huh. uh, like the bright man ability, that doesn't hurt him. So you're like, how Can do you hit balloon or something? No, I I actually used rush jet or the rush spring. Uh -huh. I was like, maybe this is the only way to hit him. I kept jumping on rush and I hit him a few times, but that's not even how you beat him. So I like, Brad, how in the fuck do you beat this guy? I do not want to start all the way over with the, with the boss gauntlet. So what you do is you take drill man's power. And you jump and you throw a drill at him, and right before it hits him, because if it hits him, even if it's, you, it can't reach him, right before it hits him, you push B to detonate the drill bomb, and it explodes and oh, it wow. hits him. I didn't even know that. I didn't know it exploded. I didn't know that either. And that's the only way to hit him. <laughs> I didn't know until later that the rush jet, you can control it up and down. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. I learned that in like the first or second stage of uh, Kossiak's mm -hmm. uh, castle or whatever it's called. Yeah, so that level two form was was killer, but level three, easy. I just have down level three equals bitch, so he must have been really easy. <laughs> you fought him again after that? Yeah, he after that he has a level three form, and it's he's real easy. Oh, I think maybe that's why I don't remember because it it's so easy. Yeah, I think you could just like stand below what he's doing, and he can't even hit you, and just take away his life. You know what I didn't like about this game, unless unless maybe I there's something that I didn't know. But it, there was nothing like in Mega Man 2 with the uh, with the metal blade where you could shoot in all directions. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I really don't like that about the Mega Man games. You'd think that Dr. Light would be smart <clears> enough <throat> to make a robot who could <laughs> shoot upwards. At least a special ability where he could rotate his arm angle. But I thought that would have made it more interesting. But it's still a, a good game, and I look forward to completing it finally. Yeah, I think this was in one level... Of Dr. Wily's castle, at, I think the end of the third stage is an energy tank like in a wall. Do you ever, do you remember that? Yeah. How the do you get that stage? energy tank in one of them? One I'm of at, at, the, at the end of the first stage where you fight the hard hat guy uh -huh. or something, I do remember that. I have no idea how to get it. Do you, um... I was thinking because right before that, there's like some blocks that you have to like fall down on mm -hmm. in order to get to the <clears> passageway. <throat> I was thinking because if you jump on the blocks to like go upwards. Mm -hmm. I was thinking maybe it would be like Mario Brothers 1 where you yeah. go on the top and you get, get access to it that way. I tried not, that. That's the only thing I could think of. You um, use the balloon and you slide. Uh, oh, that makes sense. Uh, I didn't even think of that. You actually got it? Yeah. It still doesn't make physical sense. It does Because it, there's like a very slim yeah. type, uh, it, area for him to slide. and You have to get it just right. Really? I, I thought maybe he had to use Ring Man's ability and throw the that's ring what I thought. on the I other side. That. I tried that. Okay. <laughs> So, want to move into our top five list? Sure. Doing Vegas theme. Uh, since we're in Vegas, we decided to make a top five list of anything Vegas and, and or gambling related. Movies? Movies. Okay. So, uh, how about we do guest first? Aaron, would you like to give our your number five? Yes, uh, my number five was uh, Rain Man. I almost put that because oh, of the, I almost put that because of the tart freak out. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh my, my reason was it was a touching, you know, story of a, <laughs> two brothers, you know, coming together and a man discovering life was about more than, you know, the yuppie uh, goals. Yeah, it was just kind of a heartfelt thing. Yeah, Dustin Hoffman, stellar. That's my favorite role he's ever done. Better than Hook from. Uh, no, what blasphemy. <laughs> Rain Man is way better than Hook. What about uh, Meet the Fockers? 
Oh, I, the dad who did Capoeira. <laughs> I've never seen. That. I've never seen that film. <laughs> that that scene is funny when he does it, try to do the Capoeira against the police officer and gets tased. <laughs> but uh, Rain Man is much better. You got me thinking about Dustin Hoffman parts now. <laughs> I mean, Tootsie, The Graduate. I never, I've never seen, seen those. Not a bad actor. <laughs> <laughs> He's pretty good. <laughs> My number five. I, I hope I don't take someone's top spot, but I just, I, I just really couldn't think of very many. Um, I put Sin City. Only it's not really set in Vegas, but the name is of Vegas <laughs> is Sin City. I, don't I, was think of that. I was trying to think outside the box, Maybe so I'd have a little there. bit more different ones. But Sin City uh, put a new light on Elijah Wood. Uh, he played Kevin, I think his name was. Yeah, it was a little Kevin. Freak who had the long fingernails and. Just tore people up and ate them and just really freaked me out. And uh, Mickey Rourke, who, okay actor, <laughs> so far, uh, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> that guy's phenomenal. Oh, the wrestler. Man. Good character. Ram me, Ram. Yeah. Uh, Ram Jam. No, uh, <laughs> but my favorite was Bruce Willis in that movie. Yeah. Uh, played a very good part. Was it Harding? Detective Harding? Yeah, but that was my number five, Sin City. It uh, looks amazing in Blu-ray. I don't have it on Blu-ray, but I saw a Blu-ray part of it. That's right. Uh, my number five is 3,000 Miles to Graceland. Oh, I forgot. I love that movie. Yeah, with Kevin Costner and Kurt Russell. I don't think I've seen that. Oh, it's really good. It's about two Elvis impersonators that rob a casino. And uh, basically, in the beginning, you see a... It's kind of like a... Symbolism: You see a white scorpion fighting a black scorpion, and that in, ended up being, you know, Kurt Russell and Kevin Costner uh, fighting throughout the whole uh, movie, trying to get this money that they stashed. Uh, it's got Ray you know, Monica from Friends in it, Courtney Cox. Um, but that movie is such a good movie. It takes place in Las Vegas. She was a bomb in Ace Ventura: Pet Detective. <laughs> Second quarterback of all, greatest quarterback of all time. <laughs> 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 I, I I agree. <laughs> Laces out, Dan. <laughs> yeah, great movie. Yeah, Three thousand miles to Graceland. Uh, my movie, since it, we were including gambling related movies, I went with Casino Royale, the uh, the reboot of the James Bond flicks released in two thousand six. Um, I had that as my number four. I just want to chime in. All right, all right, all right. Um, I'm not I'm not really a huge fan of the whole Bond. Genre, although I do appreciate GoldenEye for N64. Mm-hmm. Um, I like the movie a lot. There was a lot of uh, cool scenes with the, the with the poker. They were playing No Limit Hold'em, which is the most popular form of poker at this time. Um, there was some kind of unbelievable stuff that happened. Like there, there was a, a tale that the, the antagonist had where his eye would bleed or something yeah. like that. It was kind of silly. Hannibal. He plays Hannibal now. <laughs> right. Uh, there was also a dramatic last hand between uh, James Bond. I can't remember that guy's name. Daniel the Chiefer. Craig. Well, I know. Uh, the Chiefer? The Chief. I think that's yeah. right. The Chief, that's right. But there was also two other players involved in the hand as well. I play a good amount of poker, and I saw this, and I was like, I don't think that would ever really happen. Yeah, that was pretty <laughs> there, there were four people, and they were all, all in. One guy, I wrote it down. One guy had a king high flush. The next guy had a full house, eights full of aces. The sheaf, the antagonist, had aces full of sixes, and he was all proud of himself, thinking he had the best hand. And, of course, James Bond rolls over the eight high straight flush to take all of the money. <laughs> It was a cool little scene. I not very realistic, but was, it was that fine. a royal flush? No, straight flush. Straight flush. A royal flush would be ten to ace oh. of the, all of the same suit. Well, you, I thought you said ace high. Eight, eight high. Oh, eight, eight, eight high. high. Oh, okay. Yeah. That that would have been bomb if he got a royal flush. Oh man, that would be even more unrealistic. <laughs> <laughs> so you know those big chips they played with? Were those made of rubies and sapphires? No. Uh, well, why do they have big chips like that? They're they're, they're popular in Europe. Mm-hmm. They're just. A different form of what were they in, Did that take place in Monaco? I believe it was in France. France. Yeah, that was, uh, it that's might have been for, Monaco. That's the first time I've seen those big chips like that. I'm going to go on record and say Daniel Craig is my favorite James Bond. My only issue with Daniel Craig as James Bond is I I don't think James Bond needs to be as ripped as Daniel Craig is. 
And for that reason, I kind of favor favor Pierce Brosnan. Isn't it? Wouldn't it be more realistic if he was Rick, though? I don't think so, because I think he kind of gets gets along with his savvy. And wit. You usually have to get in some sort of fight or physical altercation. But I, I like rooting for a guy who I might actually be. You, know? you think you could actually be James Bond? I don't think I could actually. Okay, maybe I, think, I didn't uh, word that correctly. I but. think you could be James Bond. <laughs> <laughs> But I'm I'm not a physical specimen. I'm I, I don't I don't know. Does that make any sense at all? Am I not making any sense? Or? No, you make sense. I mean, it makes sense. I just don't agree. He's a he's a double agent. He's not. You're still like an operative. Seems like you'd still have to be able to take care of yourself to pull in this situation. The, I think to pull off the gentleman spy, you have to be kind of sleek and slender. And you know, if you're walking around big old buff, they're not gonna you know they oh you know he's buff. He's probably a spy or something. Well, but he's not like. Like Brock Lesnar walking around, you know. He's like, you know when he takes off his shirt, you know that's. I can't. He's, he's probably on something, dude. He he's in his fifties and he looks like that. It's it's not right. He's got an orange tint to his skin. I don't remember him having an orange tint, but it's definitely not normal. If he would have had some flaw, like a like a little tail or something on, <laughs> on the back of his pants, it'd be cool. But <laughs> I like that. A list. Um, one one note about Pierce Brosnan best part in Mrs. Doubtfire is when he's walking away and she throws a lime at the back of his head yeah that was it's funny. a drive by fruiting <laughs> <laughs> and he just like, he knows it's her he's like you bitch you <laughs> has anyone seen uh, El Matador or The Matador no or Pierce Brosnan so. plays a hitman in Mexico mm-hmm. who's like, clin- like clinically depressed mm-hmm. it's pretty good oh I, I wrote down a, a quote from each of my movies. Uh, so the quote from this movie was when Bond was being tortured by getting lashed directly to the testicles. Yes. Uh, he says, I've got a little itch down there. Would you mind? <laughs> I thought that was kind of funny. That's badass right there. The <laughs> uh, chief uh, cut a hole in the bottom of a wicker chair <laughs> and made Bond sit in it naked. And, of course, gravity takes place and your balls hang. <laughs> Man, he took was it a rock on a rope and just like whack yeah. hit him with it like yeah. underneath the, and right in the nuts. It was one of the <laughs> painful, very, very unpleasant scene to watch. But James Bond somehow made made it uh, made it fun. Okay, number four. Um, it's another family related film. Um, this one's kind of about the dangers of irresponsible parenting. Uh, honey, I blew up the kid. <laughs> <laughs> That's tight. <laughs> I don't think there's much really discussion coming to that. <laughs> Rick Moranis is a savage. <laughs> Rick Moranis, I really like him. He's not, he's not in enough movies. I think that was that might have been his last movie. <laughs> it's a good way to go out. <laughs> Mine was Casino Royale. Oh, okay. So we already talked about that one. Uh, my number four is Con Air with Nick Cage. <laughs> nice. Uh, even though it technically doesn't all you know take place in Vegas, uh, it's above the airspace, and they eventually land the plane. Spoiler alert: in Vegas on the Strip, uh, Nick Cage is just a badass. He could be in any movie and just kill it. Ghost Rider, I think he's an awesome Ghost Rider. Um, Con Air, Bangkok Dangerous. I never seen that. Is that good? It, 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 bad ending, but good movie. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I remember on Connor when he gets pissed at Cyrus the virus. It's like a badass moment of all time when Cyrus is, it does something to piss him off, like he's going to eat shot the pilot or something, and they're all in uh, peril. And Nick Cage just gets, gets vroom, he just turns all savage and he starts walking. And Cyrus shoots him right out of the arm, and he just keeps walking. Doesn't back. even flinch. He's like, I think he just got shot in the arm. What else, bitch? <laughs> what else you got? Better shoot me in the head before I reach you. And that roundhouse kick he does. <laughs> the front roundhouse kick. That was awesome. Yeah. I remember that was in the trailers. And it, I saw it on TV. Uh, and it, and he did that roundhouse kick. I was like, holy shit, look at that roundhouse kick. Yeah. I got a great sound clip of Nicolas Cage. Jesus! That was a clip. <laughs> was that from Racing Arizona? A Wild at Heart. Oh. 
Have you guys ever seen The Wicker Man? No, I haven't seen that yet. He punches a woman in the face in that movie. It's awesome. <laughs> Do you know why? Because they're, they're all part of a cult, and he's, like, trying to save the town, and she, like, stomps him, and he's just like, I ain't got time for this. Pow! So they don't even need to show that. It's just a wild mob. You could show him just getting away, but they have to put him punching a woman. Yeah. Okay. Is it on an island? Yeah. For some reason, I believe it. Yeah. It's, it's a remake island. of the old one. Yeah. Yeah. Far, there's like ten quotes in that movie, ten scenes that are just like amazing. <laughs> he's uh gets a, a helmet full of bees put on and he's like, Not the bees <laughs> <laughs> You should YouTube it like uh Wicker Man top ten moments and boom, they're all right there for you. I think it's turning into a Nick Cage top five list. <laughs> he's in a lot of Vegas movies. Yeah. Notice that. Uh my number four was the hangover. I'm sure everyone knows what the hangover is. A bunch of guys go to Las Vegas for a bachelor party. They get roofied and they kind of spend the next day trying to figure out what the fuck happened. Um, I enjoyed this movie in particular because I'm a big fan of Zach Galifianakis and this movie kind of introduced me to him. Uh, the other guys I could really care less about. Although, the, to me, I don't, he might have done other movies prior to this movie, but this also uh, introduced Bradley Cooper to me as well. Um, He's sexy. He is very good looking, yes. Uh, I wrote down a quote from Alan, Zach Galifianakis' character. He's walking down the strip. He, he walks up to some girl and he asks, This isn't the real Caesar's Palace, is it? Does Caesar live here? And the girl says, No, of course. And he says, I didn't think so. <laughs> yeah. Um, no have, you, have you seen him dressed up as George Washington no. in one of his comic routines? He's all talking old time English or whatever, like he old whatever, and then so he's all talking, and then all of a sudden he goes, "So who's this Ben Franklin motherfucker?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's comic gold right there. <laughs> Was that the Live at the Onion? No, wow. For yeah, I mean, I have that movie. It's not not as good, but I saw that clip on. Um, I think it was that one Showtime uh, with. What was that called? The uh, with Brian Foster. Oh, comedians of comedy. Yeah, that's funny. Um, my. My next one, the third one, was Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. Kind of crazy movie about doing too many drugs and being in Vegas. And the drugs kind of um, have a guy see like kind of the absurdity of certain things in Vegas. Too many lights, too much going on. It uh, That movie was very exhausting to me. I only watched like the first 15 minutes. You could see how it would be. Yeah, and it was just over the top. It was hot. It looked, looked hot, mm -hmm. and uh, it was. I couldn't. I couldn't uh, really watch it, but I did notice uh, Johnny Depp in the movie says like, "This is back country" or something, and then it takes you to Avenged Sevenfold. It clicked in my head. Oh, that Avenged Sevenfold wrote or incorporated their their back country song into this movie. Yeah, there's a great scene where they're in like a casino uh, room and everyone becomes like lizards and they all start eating each other and having sex with each other. Huh. A lot of crazy stuff like that. It's a movie I recommend watching alone. It's not very good to watch with other people. Mm. It's just, if you're just in kind of like a contemplative mood or something, I don't know, or melancholy or something, it's something you watch alone. Kind of like uh, Requiem for a Dream. Yeah, maybe have a couple beers or something and just watch it alone. That's my recommendation. Okay. I'll, I'll check it out again. I'll try to watch it. You watch Requiem for a Dream? Yet? Not yet. Dude. I'll watch it eventually. That's the one with Marlon Wayans. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a rough movie. It is. <laughs> Jennifer Connelly. Yeah. Ass to ass. Yeah, and then Marlon Wayans has a big abscess on his arm. We no, that's uh, Jared Leto. Oh, is it? Yeah. Um, my number three was The Hangover. Mm -hmm. A great movie. Yeah. Yeah. You guys think great moments think alike. My number three. Is Leprechaun Three, <laughs> the one without Jennifer. that. The first one without Jennifer Aniston. Yeah, uh, it takes place in Vegas. The Leprechaun Warwick Davis goes around and is trying to make everyone's dreams come true, and of course they come true, and it's in a horrible way. Um, Yo, that scene where the woman comes out of the TV. Yeah, is so freaky, and doesn't she turn into like some kind of robot? Yep. Like, it's re I, it really stuck with me, and it was really disturbing to me. That's actually the only scene I kind of I really remember. Yeah. I tried to go back and watch some Vegas movies to you know talk about them. Uh, I don't think I left the prime three. But what, was it part two when the uh, guy in jail wants his lawyer to go fuck himself? Yeah, and the guy wait, was, 
Or what was that Wishmaster Part Two? Oh, that was Wishmaster. Yeah, that's right. And the the guy uh, needs bend backwards and the lawyer and screws himself. Like that's pretty grim. Yeah. I actually like Leprechaun in Space. That was really good too. <laughs> Find it hard to believe that he's good. <laughs> yeah, it, was actually, it was actually pretty good. Usually those in space movies aren't that well, good. Well, especially the, the two ideas are contradictory. <laughs> <laughs> How so? Well, there's no rainbows in space. <laughs> Possible, though. <laughs> uh, yeah, but uh, another great space movie is Jason 10. That's your great space movie? Not Star Wars, not some <laughs> version Star, Star Wars. Wars. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Not like Prometheus or some Prometheus is movie. Alien is tight. Alien 1. Alien uh, I like Gattaca. Gattaca is good, too. I like Gattaca, too. Yeah. But I, I like Star Wars, but I'm not like some huge Star Wars nerd. I definitely like Star Wars over Star Trek, but the Star Trek movies, the new ones, are pretty cool. But I'm just saying, I think it's funny. He said another good space movie <laughs> is Jason X. <laughs> Horror fans. <laughs> uh, my number three was Casino, starring Robert De Niro, Joe Pesci, and Sharon Stone. I forgot about that one. Yeah. I've seen bits and pieces of that one. Is that where she, show, she shows her pussy? No, that's basic that. instinct. Huh? Um, yeah. Oh, when she uncrosses her yeah. legs. Yeah, that's. And you don't even really see anything. It's more of a shadow. <laughs> um, so it's about this guy named Sam Rothstein. He's a bookkeeper. Uh, he rises through uh, the Las Vegas ranks just just by setting these awesome lines. That the the casino is making tons of money off of him and his ideas. He kind of revel. He's a real guy. Well, Sam Rothstein's not a real guy. He, he's portraying a, uh, a non-fictional character. I don't remember the guy's name, but it's, a, it's about a real guy. He rises through the Vegas ranks just by uh, bringing in tons of money for the casinos as a bookkeeper. And then, he, of course, he has his friend, Nicky Santoro, played by Joe Pesci, who's kind of a loose cannon, just as Joe Pesci normally is. And he also has his horrible wife, uh, played by Sharon Stone. And they kind of go through, rise through the Las Vegas ranks in uh, less moral ways, I suppose. Um, now, Rostin could never really be uh, part of the mafia because he's a Jewish guy. So that's part of the problem, too, is he's, he's right. making them so much money, but they never really treat him like family. Yeah. Typical Jew. That, that, the, the, the movie kind of progresses, like everything's going good, everything's going good, everything's going good, and all of a sudden everything just starts going downhill. And once it starts going downhill, it goes downhill fast. Uh, so, yeah, that's that's the problem. It's not only the mafia that's that's causing a problem, but it's also the government getting involved. So it's coming from all over the place. So it's the it's basically the rise and fall of this character named uh, Sam Rothstein. I noticed the theme in a lot of these mafia movies where the guy will, like, want a woman... Who doesn't really want him, um, but she'll like eventually agree to like be with him. Mm. Um, like you know, Scarface is the same kind of situation. Right. And I, I just wonder why. Like what? Um, what's the deal with that? Hmm. Fucking women. Yeah, but why doesn't the guy like you know want to you know date some girl that like actually likes him? It seems like it's all about just having the baddest bitch on the block. And. Uh, I guess it's a comment on their materialism, even in love, like they can't separate from anything. Yeah. Deep. I'm sure that's what Scorsese was going for. Possibly. <laughs> um, so we probably all know the Decepticons, but those of you out in the, uh, the podcast world might know. They're a hardcore band from Sacramento. They took a quote from this movie and put it in one of their songs. It's kind of a long quote, but I'm gonna I'm gonna give it my best shots. Uh, said by Nicky Santoro to a guy who is trying to get, uh, you know, he's trying to extort money from him. So he says, "I think, in all fairness, I should explain to you exactly what it is that I do. For instance, tomorrow morning I'll get up nice and early, take a walk down over to the bank, and walk in and see. And uh, if you don't have any money for me." I'll crack your fucking head wide open in front of everybody in the bank. And just about the time that I'm coming out of jail, hopefully you'll be coming out of your coma. And guess what? I'll split your fucking head open again because I'm fucking stupid. I don't give a fuck about jail. That's my business. That's what I do. To tag on to that, so that was the end of the quote, by the way. I'm, I'm me now. Uh, 
I read a little thing saying that this movie ranks fourth all time for the most uses of the word fuck. Hmm. A little tidbit of trivia there. And the other movies were like documentaries that were like documenting the word fuck. So really? <laughs> basically, it's the, the, the movie that use, most uses the word fuck. And Megatron didn't say that quote just to ease Brad's mind. I know who the Death Scepter comes from. I did say they were a band from yeah. Sacramento, didn't I? Okay. <laughs> I remember seeing them. My number two is a sexier pick because Vegas is sexy too. A indecent proposal. Hmm. Oh. How many of us have thought about, you know, going to a casino and having someone offer us an indecent proposal? <laughs> and would we be able to refuse it or not? If a man wanted to sleep with you for a million dollars, would you be able to say no? I would. I would say no. That 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 movie pissed me off like to no end. I don't know why, but I just looked at uh, Demi Moore in a whole different light. The actor, she, yeah, yeah, the character actor, whatever. But I was just like, that, I don't like that movie. Um, I mean, she she eventually goes with the other guy. And uh, Woody, poor Woody Har- Harrelson is just sitting there, like, wanting this one picture uh, at the end of the movie and, and ends up betting his whole million dollars on it. And the, the guy, of course, had outbid him, but he just felt sorry for him. Yeah, it makes you feel real shitty to be, like, an everyman. Like, yeah. it's basically like the guy that has money just can take your girl if you really wanted to. Yeah. It, I don't know. Any movies that involve people cheating on each other, I can't stand. Like, there's another one. I think with Gwyneth Paltrow, that and that made me not like her as a person and as an actress. I can't remember what it, it was. It happens though. Yeah, it does. It does. Are you guys familiar with the movie uh, Honeymoon in Vegas? I've another you, great Nick Cage movie, by the way. I've I've I never jump out of a plane with Elvis and yeah, do. It's it's basically a spoof of in, indecent proposal. That's the only reason I brought uh, it. Okay. It, it's. Uh, Nick Cage is playing poker with James Caan's character, and James Caan is kind of the uh, Robert Redford. Is kind of the Robert Redford of uh, of Honeymoon in Vegas, and he it turns out that he cheated him, but he won this hand of poker against him, and he, and Nick Cage ends up owing a huge debt, and he says, "Well, how about this? We'll we'll forgive your debt if I can spend one night alone with your wife." And of course, Nick Cage ends up doing that. Who's the wife in that movie? <laughs> Sarah, Sarah Jessica, Jessica Parker. Parker. Oh, that's right. That's why I never saw it. Because I don't like her. <laughs> Looks like a horse. Yeah. But that movie had a much different ending than an Indecent Proposal. Had a happy ending. Alright, so my number two movie, Thinking Outside the Box again. This movie has a hint of gambling in it. It's a little bit. <laughs> the Wizard. <laughs> <laughs> with Fred Savage nice. Kevin Arnold that takes place in Vegas nope but it has gambling in it oh, I, for some reason I had thought of that movie but I didn't think it was in. Uh, yeah uh, he, he bet, bet some kids at a local arcade grocery store that he could kick their ass in Double Dragon the, the little autistic brother Jimmy <laughs> can, I, can I ask a question though yeah I, I wonder, like, um, <laughs> despite whatever it list, it, movie list it is you're making, no matter what the theme is, does the wizard always come up? And say, <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay. It's the first time I start to up. You know, um, this is funny, because in their last episode, they were talking about top five characters, and I was like, where's Fred Savage? Mm-hmm. It is Fred Savage, too. Yeah, Wonder Years. Winnie Cooper. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I put that in there because uh, Wizard, one of the greatest movies of all time. <laughs> that was a straight face, but I thought it was when I was little. Uh, had Wizard, the Tom Cruise movie. No, with uh, Christian Slater. Oh, that's Fred, called. That's not called Wizard. Legend. Legend. Uh, Christian Slater and his dad go search for Kevin Arnold and his little brother. Uh, he's trying to get to California because that's the only word he could apparently fucking say in that movie. <laughs> and um, <laughs> so Fred Savage like, I guess you want to go to California because that's all you can say. That kid kind of looks like uh, Wynn. Oh, he like so at like all. Jordan or Sa- uh, Logan. Yeah. And um, so they, they, there's a lot of video games in that movie. Uh, Ninja Gaiden or Ninja Gaiden, sorry, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which Christian Slater. Pulls out of his truck and hooks up to the hotel TV and starts playing. <laughs> and um, I believe it's got Double Dragon, Super Mario 3, uh, all great games. I, I, I heard Mario 3 on that, right? 
Yeah, that's that was that big advertising. I didn't like that movie because the the little girl didn't know what the fuck she was talking about. The one that was going around with them. Yeah. Because she said he beat Ninja Gaiden twice without dying or getting hit, and you saw his life bar two bars yeah. missing. He was apparently hit. Yeah. Stupid bitch. <laughs> You know what pissed me off about is in that final well, the final showdown where they're doing the Super Mario Brothers three yeah. uh, competition. How the fuck does he know to fly up to the top of that little semi castle to get the flute? That pissed me off so bad. <laughs> because he was a wizard. <laughs> no one knows that shit. Come on, not the first time you play. <laughs> no. Yeah, that uh, introduced the Power Glove as well. Had a commercial for the Power Glove. <laughs> that Rad Racer and the the his name was Lucas, right? Yep. He he actually had the Power Glove and he was doing this. Move his head back and forth like he was driving. The power glove didn't work like that. No, it didn't. He didn't have the little sensors on top of his TV. No. And he had it in, a, in a, like a briefcase, like a top secret James Bond case. Yeah. And he, he didn't. No wires connected. They probably cut the wire off. I feel like Nintendo put a lot of misinformation out there. The <laughs> because they showed on the commercial you could punch like this on Mike Tyson, yeah. and we tried to do that. Then where you had to move your fingers to punch like this with punch, this with dodge. It was just horrible. Yeah. Power yeah. glove. Wasted peripheral. Our mom put it on layaway at Kmart. Yeah. And we got that. Uh, she got that paid off and picked up Little Mermaid the same day. And Bad Dudes. And Bad Dudes. And that Power Glove was a waste of money. The power, the best scene in the, of the Power Glove is Not Right on Street Part 6, Freddy's Dead, when he brings <laughs> out the Power Glove. And he's like, you forgot the Power Glove! <laughs> and he's all... That was tight. Boing, 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 boing. Yeah, Freddy Krueger's awesome. So that was my number two, Hidden Asper. Thinking outside the box, the wizard, when he gambled on Double Dragon. It's and funny, because my number two is thinking outside the box as well. But this character is gambling with his life. And that's Rocky IV. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, going up against Ivan Drago, Fuck that he guy. knew he could die, but he's had to get revenge for Apollo Creed dying. You guys are taking liberties with this time. <laughs> I knew you were going to say something like that. <laughs> uh, did any scene in that occur in vain? <laughs> no, but it, it, he was gambling. gambling. Was yeah, we uh, extended it to gambling. <laughs> I, I, I just knew that if I did my straight top five, we'd, we'd clash and like had a different ones. But my top five, I thought outside the box, was like wizards, you know. Good Rocky Four. I didn't even think of that. The <laughs> <a> reason <laughs> I was debating on whether or not to put Silver Linings Playbook in there. There's a whole of a hell of a lot more gambling in that movie than there is in this. I don't <laughs> think so. I, I want to see that movie. I haven't seen it yet. Well, that movie it's is good. so tight. That's yeah. such a good movie. Yeah. Bradley Cooper's in it. Good boy. Oh yeah, but uh, that one chick, Jennifer uh, Lawrence. Yeah, right, from uh, Hunger Games. Yeah, yeah. yeah. who's she play? Like she plays a she plays dancer. a role. She plays a dancer role. The dancer role. A dancer role. Yeah. What do you she, mean? she looks very different from Hunger Games. What? It, like a stripper? No. <laughs> what do you mean dancer? Like a ballet, like a dancer. Oh, okay. She's like another person with mental problems. Yeah, they both have mental issues. I thought it was about football. Wait, wait. Is she's in Wedding Crashers? No. <laughs> no, they're talking about Silver, Silver Linings. Oh, right. okay, okay. I thought I thought it was a game a movie about football because it has a football play. I think it's football play on, mm -hmm. on the box, but it wasn't. It was it was actually a really good movie. All right, I was just thinking about buying it. Well, that's why the movie was good because it had you know the romantic comedy aspect for the women and a little bit of sports and gambling for the guys. Yeah. Oh, of, that did have gambling in it, so that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that. Yeah. Robert uh, Robert De Niro's Robert character De Niro. had a serious gambling problem. Yep. Hmm. Do you have anything to add about Rocky IV? Uh, the soundtrack is amazing. I have that. I listen to the soundtrack when I work out at the gym and lift weights. That's not the one with Eye of the Tiger, is it? No, I don't. That's, I don't like Eye of the Tiger. I like uh, Heart Hearts on Fire, and there's no easy way out. Hearts on Fire just gets it going. Have you listened to that song? How's it go? Uh, hearts on fire, oh, yeah. strong D. Oh, yeah, 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 that yeah. song is so tight. I mean, it, it's amazing. <laughs> what? <laughs> I can't imagine pumping iron to that. <laughs> you can't <laughs> pumping something else. <laughs> That's so, no, it, just listen, listen to it when you lift weights. No. <laughs> listen to it. <laughs> you want to take this over Rob Zombie when you lift weights? Listen, just listen. 
Oh, it, yeah, he does have some mellow aspect to it. There we go, it's picking up. Oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> you made a believer out of me. Get to the chorus. <laughs> <laughs> He's training to fight, and and uh, this is a music montage song yeah, that yeah, yeah. when he uh, he's training in the snow to beat Ivan Drago, who's using steroids and all this mechanical. Because equipment. there's no easy way out. <laughs> Man, <dude. laughs> that was impressive. I could have kept going. Wow. Brandon was doing push-ups. He was not only doing push-ups, he was like pushing up, pushing himself up off the ground, like he was getting the air. <laughs> That's pretty sweet. So now I know why that those songs give me power. Yeah. I guess that justifies your <laughs> Rocky Four pick on a Las Vegas theme <laughs> uh, topic. Uh, my number two was the Cincinnati Kid, released in 1965. WTF. Yeah, I, I didn't figure any of you guys have ever, ever seen this. Newton. Who's Newton? Uh, wait, um, Newton. no, um, <laughs> hold on, uh, the guy with the salad dressing. <laughs> Paul Newman. <laughs> no, it's not. No, it's okay. Not. That's, um, what's, uh, not Stephen McQueen, what's the other guy's name? You got it, Steve McQueen. Steve McQueen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so since Steve McQueen is the kid, uh, there's a whole bunch of backstory to it, but the, the, the coolest part is the, obviously the card playing. At this time, the game was a five card stud. Which, if you're not familiar, you get four cards up and one card face down. So basically, you know everything about your opponent's hand other than that one card. So there's this. So Steve McQueen's trying to prove to everyone that he's, you know, the best five card stud player in the world. And he goes up against this guy who's simply known as the Man. The Man has a name, but I, who, who cares what his name is? It doesn't really matter. Uh, and the final hand. Uh, they're going back and forth at each other for hours and hours and hours and hours just trying to, you know, get the best of each other. And finally they get down to this one hand where their head's up, there's no one else playing, everyone else has already lost all their money. The kid has showing ace, ace, ten, ten. And the man has showing eight, nine, ten, queen, all in diamonds. So the kid in the hole has another ace for aces full of tens a virtually unbeatable hand in a five card stud game but of course the man has eight nine ten queen all in diamonds you know what the guy the man needs to make a straight flush jack, jack of diamonds jack of diamonds it's a very specific card so that's basically the only card that can possibly beat the kid all the money goes in and and then some the man in this particular game pulls money out of his pocket and bets an additional $5,000. The kid doesn't have this, but he has a backer there. So he, the backer says, you know, you, you're going to have to pay me this back. You're going to be in debt for a long time if you can't pay me this back. The kid's thinking about it. Does this guy have the Jack of Diamonds? Eventually, he, he goes ahead and puts it in. The man has the Jack of Diamonds. Oh, and man. that's basically how the movie ends. It's just a pure downer. Like, the kid's just down in the dumps lost everything and then some he's going to be in debt for the rest of his life that's crazy that's, that's how the movie ends it's a pretty crazy movie um one little quote from the movie uh, there was a point where the man calls another one of the players when the, when the other player was bluffing and the guy and the guy's like how did you know that i was bluffing and the man says son all you paid was the looking price the lessons are extra hmm. very classic who plays the man? I didn't write that down. I, don't uh, know. I just thought it might have been like a big name. Um, it wasn't a big name, otherwise oh, okay. I would have included it. Okay. I'll look it up. So that was my number two. Alright, for my number one, I'm going to play a song. <laughs> see who can guess the, Ooh, be fun. the theme is here. Perfect. <laughs> I think it's over the top. Oh, what? It is. Over the top. Yeah. That's okay though. It is the theme from Over the Top, a great movie about a father 
uh, who does what he has to do to get to his son and take his son back from an evil father-in-law who runs a corrupt uh, empire, right? <laughs> trucking empire, or something. <laughs> I don't remember. But uh, it's an inspiring film with an, enough cheese to uh, keep you happy. It's a cheese-free movie, man. Silver Stone's going up against this guy who has biceps twice as, as, big, as big as his. What he does is he does his power move. He takes his hat and flips it backwards. Yes. Like, it's time to fucking go over the top on this guy. <laughs> yeah. He says that he turns into a machine when he turns his hat around. That's so tight. <laughs> and he gets a grip. He has a signature grip that he gets. Yeah, when oh, he, yeah, he, he like, opens up and then yeah, he goes. Yeah. I didn't think of it as a sci-fi movie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to start wearing a hat during sex. <laughs> and then when I turn it backwards, I'm like, it's machine time. <laughs> Does your wife listen to this podcast? Yeah. She actually loves it. She enjoys a lot of it. <laughs> the only part now she that... Knows. Huh? Now she knows when you come in with the hat. Oh, yeah. She'll know it's time. I'm gonna, <laughs> at my sister-in-law's house, I'm gonna, after we listen to the podcast, I'm going to go put on a hat. <laughs> you should put like, on a hat while you're listening to it. And then right, wait, and then right when you do it, just turn it around. And be like, open up. Um, uh, what would you say the part she doesn't like? Oh, about the game stuff, because she hasn't played the games. Uh, but she still listens to it. She enjoys it. She likes it a lot. So I, I, I feel kind of bad being in this spot, giving my number one movie, because I think I'm still in it for maybe. From you guys, my number one movie is going to be Rounders, with um, Matt Damon and Ed Norton. Uh, absolutely great movie. One of the, It's one of the first gambling movies I watched. Uh, just... Got uh, he goes against Johnny Chan one time when he tells that story. That's my favorite part of that movie. Yeah, that's my number one too. Edward Norton is just an amazing actor. That's my number one as well. Uh, Edward Norton. Uh, I don't know why they he, Marvel couldn't get along with them so he could continue playing as the great the Incredible Hulk. He I thought he was the best Hulk, better than. Um, was the name Mark Ruffalo? I like Mark Ruffalo. I don't. I don't like Mark Ruffalo. He was just, in uh, Zodiac. Just because he took that part from Ed Norton. Ruffalo doesn't really have any edge. Like with Norton, you could see that there'd be some sort of anger, and yeah, him. It could pop out as a whole. Ruffalo just strikes me as like a good-looking guy who just he has just, good banter. He just is, you know, he just you, you know he goes back and forth with uh, Robert Downey Jr. in that scene. But that's all he has is a smooth tongue. But Ed well, Norton, it's because Bruce Banner at that point went through years of uh, psychiatrism, and he. Um, but still, the the Hulk needs to have that look that he could snap. And Edward Norton definitely has that. He does. He, he's. I just was so upset. I still haven't watched the Avengers on DVD. That's the first movie I bought in 3D Blu-ray. I haven't watched it because I can't stand. That's a shame. It's a good movie though. Yeah, it is. I saw it in the theater and I liked it, but. Edward Norton was the first one to actually say Hulk smash in the recent movies, right? That was my favorite part of the, the, that movie when he said Hulk smash. Mm-hmm. But, so how we, we get away from talking about rounders? To <laughs> <laughs> talking about Edward Norton, Edward Norton yeah. the worm. You know, it's funny. I was going to have put Vegas Vacation as my number one. But after rewatching that movie, <laughs> I took down a bunch of notes. And I was like, this, there's no way this could be my number one. It could be my honorable mention, but not my number one. Yeah. A lot of people credit Rounders for kind of starting the poker boom. It was released in 1998. Um, it kind of it really increased the popularity of No Limit Hold'em. That's what they played in that whole movie was No Limit Hold'em. Oh, is that what did it? It was Rounders? Rounders is largely responsible for it, yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, the big thing that happened was in uh, 2003, Chris Moneymaker won the main event, and that's when... That, that was like the first time that a amateur like uh, average professional Joe was in, in the main event. And that after that, it was just, it was crazy. Didn't he get in trouble? Chris Moneymaker? Yeah. yeah. Didn't he, or is that the Fossil Man who, um... <laughs> yeah. Fossil Man Greg Raymer was recently caught in a prostitution ring or something like that. Another former main event champion. Yeah. <laughs> A bit of a tangent. <laughs> um, <laughs> Moneymaker had the glasses, right? The holographic the glasses. The eyeball glasses. No, that's Raymer had the eyeball glasses. Oh, Raymer? So. Oh, that fuck. Moneymaker did wear sunglasses. He played against uh, Sammy Farhog. Mm. Again, we're, we're going on a bit of a tangent. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, it was a really good movie. It showed, you know, that you, you didn't need to cheat in order to win at poker, which a lot of people thought... Poker, you you obviously are cheating if you're winning at that game, but there's also a ton of skill involved. Um, 
the the coolest scene in the movie to me was the the last scene between uh, Matt Damon and John Malkovich's character yeah. Teddy KGB. There's all sorts of cool stuff that goes down. They show. They also credit this movie for uh, the innovation of the the whole card cam. If you watch poker on television, you know that whenever they're showing a hand, they show what each player has in their hand before the hand even starts. And they did that with rounders. It was kind of the first time they ever did that, where they would show Matt Damon's hand, and you can you kind of get the impression that you're playing along with him, and during the course of the hand. And of course, the last hand is when he takes all of Teddy KGB's money in the same fashion that earlier in the movie you see Johnny Chan beat Eric Seidel by slow playing a flop straight. He'll, so if you know anything about No Limit Hold'em, the the, the the cards are dealt out. Johnny Chan gets this huge hand. He makes a straight. And he never bets it. He just checks, 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 and lets Eric Seidel bet it every every hand, every street. And he eventually takes all of Eric Seidel's money. So the the way that the the climax works out in rounders is Matt Damon's character uh, Mike flops a straight, checks it, checks it, checks it, checks it, checks it, and eventually John Malkovich moves all in. Of course, Matt Damon makes an easy call. He has the nuts. He has the best possible hand. And John Malkovich just goes off on him. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's so hilarious. There's another uh, funny poker tell scene in this as well with the Oreos. You remember that? Yeah. <laughs> Supposedly, whenever John Malkovich has a strong hand, he like twists an Oreo off and he eats the cream, and it was kind of silly, but it was just a Hollywood type thing. But uh, if you sit at a poker table long enough, you're going to hear this mo movie quoted all over and over. There's all sorts of good quotable lines, from mostly from Teddy KGB. Like uh, when he finally does beat him, uh, Teddy KGB does the honorable thing, which is good for poker. He says, he beat me straight up. Pay him. Pay that man his money. Uh, he also says, you know, he, he gets real mad at the end of the hand. He says, son of a bitch, check, check, check. He tricked me. <laughs> it's... it's it's a great movie. I love that movie, and it's obviously responsible for the poker industry today, a large part of it. Were you going to ask a question? Uh, I was going to say, I don't know why Matt Damon wasn't like, he's eating an Oreo. That's a tell. Even I knew that the first time I fucking saw it. <laughs> I know. That's why it's silly. I mean, oh, okay. anyone can see that. It doesn't take a poker pro to see that, <laughs> oh, he's eating an Oreo. He must have a good hand. Little flaws. Every movie has him. I'm, I still got Texas told him no limit because I was just like, I'm all in. And I got like 2-7. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a very good hand. No, it's not. <laughs> not even suited. Well, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> At least you know that 2-7 is the worst hand that you could possibly have. That's a start. I've watched enough TV <laughs> poker to know that. That's where all my knowledge comes from. <laughs> hey, a lot of people learn that way. That's how I learn. So anybody have any honorable, honorable mentions? mentions. Right, right, right. Go ahead. Uh, I've I've got a few. Uh, I've got uh, Fright Night, the newest Fright Night movie. It takes Was place in, in Vegas. It takes place in Las Vegas. I had no idea. I don't even know what that is. Colin Farrell uh, plays a great vampire in that movie. I have Ill Phil. Oh, that's that's a pretty good movie. I like yeah, I've never heard of that. I know Brad doesn't like it just because. Huh? I was sick after that when I, while I was watching it. I just had a fever. It was during Christmas. Uh, another one I've got is, of course, Vegas Vacation. I've got like five pages of notes I wrote down while I was watching that movie, <laughs> but I just looked at it and I was like, I can't put this on, I can't put this above Leprechaun 3 or Rocky, <laughs> 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 or Rocky 4. Wow. Like, like, I'll rattle off some notes I took. All I gotta say is Randy Quaid is hilarious. Oh, he is. Eddie. Yeah. He, uh, he makes that movie the way that uh, Galifianakis makes the hangover yeah. movie. Yeah. Uh, I put, in the beginning, he starts singing Good Vibrations, uh, way out of key to the Beach Boys. Uh, the kids come in when he, Clark says, I have some great news, everybody. Rusty says, is it my new car? And uh, he, and then Clark says, keep dreaming, son. Funny thing is, he ends up getting like four cars at the end of the movie. <laughs> I noticed that on when on the plane... There's a cigarette ad on the magazine. I haven't seen that in heck along. <laughs> uh, Vicini from uh, Princess Bride. He's the poker player. Vicini. Yeah, Vicini. The, the the Sicilian. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's a poker play the poker dealer uh, oh, or okay. blackjack dealer. Blackjack. Yeah, blackjack. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I do remember that. Yeah. Let me say something like um, Clark's down probably like ten thousand at this point just with this dealer, and so. Uh, he's actually on a winning streak with this lady dealer. He's winning a lot of money, and then she, you know, leaves, 
and can you see the pit boss behind her calling and then Vicini comes out and he looks he's like oh no how about this you give me half the money that you're gonna lose to me I'll go behind, we'll go behind the casino I'll kick you in the nuts <laughs> we'll call it even yeah we'll call it even <laughs> that was funny but uh, another few notes uh, Clark actually wins a hand against that dealer his first hand he wins Eddie shows up and that's just his bad luck right there. <laughs> uh, oh, he starts losing there. Uh, he loses two hundred and two hundred dollars in two minutes. Uh, gets an, changes another hundred dollars in chips. Loses that instantly. Uh, my favorite scene in that movie is when he's chastising the kids because they're like, "I wish we could gamble." They're at breakfast and he's chastising. Like, "You do not want to gamble. Uh, it's horrible. It, it, it ruins lives." I'll be back in a second. <laughs> <laughs> he runs over to the roulette wheel and says, 50 on black. <laughs> Red 26. And he goes back to the table. Uh, another good scene is when he's sitting there. They go visit Eddie in the desert in the mobile home. Uh, he grills a chicken on a rock. He's like, can I help you with your grill? He's like, we don't need a grill. And he throws a chicken on a rock. <laughs> uh, and that's pretty much it. That and the buffet the scene. Buffet. You want some blue or some of the yellow? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the buffet scene and the um, the thrift store casino. casino. Oh, that was it's hilarious. funny. We're playing which hand is it in or yeah. whatever, and <laughs> war and all these bunk casino games. I was like, dude, I I help hella one of that. <laughs> and it's uh, what number am I thinking of? There's no way. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Four, we got a seven. <laughs> and then my, my final uh, thing I want to say is I did not put a single Ocean's Eleven movie yeah, on there. Only because Juliet Roberts is in the movie. <laughs> and I hate Juliet Roberts another, just as much as Sarah Jessica Parker. Another horse face. Exactly. You don't like horse faces. <laughs> that must be it. Those are my honorable mentions and dishonorable mentions. I have a few also. Um, Leaving Las Vegas, another Nick Cage movie. Very, very depressing, but a good movie nonetheless. Uh, have it, have it, has anyone seen The Cooler with L William H. M William H. Macy? Excuse me. No, but does he die in that movie? The only time since I saw he, it, he dies in a bunch of movies. Yeah, it's like every movie. <laughs> just movie. assume that he dies because he's <laughs> in a movie. He died in Boogie Nights. He right. died in. Uh, <laughs> Didn't he kill himself? Or yeah, because his he, wife's fucking another guy like all the time. <laughs> and he like just he just has enough of it. And, like, Rock on, motherfucker. I, I do the same thing except shoot myself. Uh, he didn't die in Mystery Man. <laughs> I really like him in that show, Shameless. Have you guys seen that? I, see, I watched the first season. I really liked it, but we just stopped getting Showtime. He died in Fargo, too. Did he as a cop? Yeah, I think he ended up mm. dying. He ended up dying at the end. He got like, shot or something. Mm. But, so anyway, the cooler. <laughs> he, he's employed by the casino as a cooler. Basically, if someone goes on a winning streak at a blackjack table, he'll, he'll just stand next to them and they'll start losing. That's his job, is to stand next to people <laughs> when they're winning. And not, even, not even a dealer. No, nope, he's, he's the cooler. Well, how does that make him lose? It's just... It's a movie. It's a, it's a okay. superstition thing. Okay, okay. They believe that if he's standing near them, that he's, his, their luck is just bad luck. Change. It's yeah. a romance, right? Doesn't he get into a romance with like a waitress or something? I believe that's correct, yeah. It's been a long time since I saw it. I don't remember the details of the movie. I just thought the, the premise was funny. Uh, very bad things. We were mm -hmm. talking about that earlier today. Another bachelor party gone wrong type movie. This one's a little bit darker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> about a, they kill a prostitute by like impaling her with a impaling her head shower uh, or or, or a, a rope hook or something like that. <laughs> Come on. <What's> that? <laughs> <laughs> so so they, they end up oh. burying her in the desert. Yeah. Which we, we saw today, there's plenty of places to bury dead bodies in the desert out here in Nevada. But they don't get away with it. They're not so lucky. And I love that movie just because Cameron Diaz just goes insane in that movie, and I don't like her either. <laughs> Very hateful man. She kind of looks like an eagle. Uh, is she in Silver Lining Playbook? No. no okay, no. good. <laughs> I, I wasn't sure. Uh, Maverick with Mel Gibson and yep. James Garner. Yeah. Good one. Yeah. Is that yeah. Jennifer Garner's dad? I don't think so. Oh, okay. <laughs> what was the name of the TV show James Garner was in? Who's James Garner? Uh, was it Bonanza? No, no. He was like a detective. Columbo? No. No. Isn't that something that starts with an R, like Rushmore or something like that? I don't remember. Something like that. It was a good show? No. Oh. Uh, <laughs> he go around in like a muscle car. It's like, you know, a really 70s show. 
My other honor, honorable mention was Lucky You. Has anyone seen that? No. It, uh, it's starring another, another guy who played the Hulk, actually, Eric Bana. Mm. Uh, he's a professional poker player. His dad's also a professional poker player, played by uh, Robert Duvall. And a uh, little father-son controversy. The, as a poker player, it's cool to watch that movie because it does feature a lot of professional poker players. You get to see them in acting movies. It's kind of fun. I was going to say, Nick Cage is in a lot of Vegas movies because I thought he liked uh, Elvis a lot. Doesn't he like Elvis? Yeah, I think he does. Yeah, so maybe that has some connection. I always found this to be true, like Quentin Tarantino says. There's two types of people in the world, Beatles people and Elvis people. And I always felt like I, there was that connection. Professional. So, you said that... Beatles fan and Elvis people, and you said you were more of a what? Elvis man. I, I prefer Elvis over the Beatles as well, but Quentin Tarantino doesn't know what he's talking about because I like the Beatles too, so he's wrong. How can you like the Beatles? I like the Beatles. I like both. I like I, like, I don't like Beatles. Hey Jude is a really good song. Depressing. Mm. Imagine from John Lennon. Oh, <laughs> I knew that would get you going. Fred, uh, Fred's like that's such a depressing song. I thought I like it. Uh, yeah, Beatles suck dick. Monkeys are way better. Monkeys are better <laughs> than the Beatles, I agree. Whoa. <laughs> Who else had a TV show and had Hey Hey Where the Monkeys Are Running on the Beach in the 80s? I don't think they would have created that show <laughs> and formed that band if the Beatles had never existed. I, I, I disagree with that. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like the monkeys were... A copy of the Beatles made for TV? I don't think so because they didn't sing with English accents. They did, didn't they? Yeah, huh? the one guy had a pretty heavy English accent, the lead singer. He never let it show, though, like Ozzy. <laughs> Doesn't Ozzy let his accent show pretty? N not in the, not while he's singing, I don't think. Because I can't, like, when I hear an English accent, my ears start bleeding, but when I hear Ozzy sing, I don't, I don't mind it. Mm. Story time? All right, story time. Story time. Let's see what I have written down. I've actually got some stories I would like to actually bring up. Some Vegas related, some not. Um, first one, I'd like to have Brad be a participant in telling this story. Uh, it involves Japanese... not Vegas, is it? Because I've never been to Vegas. No, this is my it, first time in Vegas. No, it uh, involves Japanese soda. That, okay. And I would like for you to tell that story for me. Are you talking about the Tenko grape soda? Um, or the Ramune? The Ramune. Okay. I don't remember the Tenko grape soda. You remember I was telling you about it? I was like, this Tenko grape soda and has tentacles on it holding the Japanese girl. Oh. Like tentacle raping. <clears throat> yeah. Hardcore. But, um, so Brandon and I went to a comic book convention uh, at the Radisson. Uh, it used to be the Radisson. Now it's uh, some other name. It's a hotel. But we went there uh, in Sacramento. In Sacramento, uh, saw a lot of cool things. Not as good as the Scottish Rite Temple conventions, but we were. Brandon's mouth was parched. We were, it was in the middle of summer, July. It was extraordinarily hot outside. It was, not as hot as it is right now. No, no, it's not. But for Sacramento, it's like a hundred and something. Yeah, it's hot. pretty hot. So Brandon and I can't take the heat. We hate the heat. We despise it. We always want to be cold. We as soon as we got here to Vegas, we lowered the temperature down to forty degrees. <laughs> the thermostat reached forty degrees, but it is not forty degrees in here yet. <laughs> it will be soon. Uh, actually, it won't because I changed the. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, I'm a, I'm a rather thin individual. So, not as muscular. <laughs> correct. His bones aren't as heavy. Or a big bird, like I'm like a bird. <laughs> Brandon's thirsty, and he he goes by a booth. Uh, they have a lot of booths set up, and he sees a Ramune. I call it Ramune because I'm English American, <laughs> and he calls it Ramune, and it's a bubblegum soda where you actually grab the bottle of soda and you push down on it, and it releases like a cork, a marble, a marble down. Had that before, and a pretty tasty. It's amazing, right? It's good. So I'm like, I need this ram ramen soda because it's so good and delicious and I'm very thirsty. So he's thirsty and he's he's all like, okay, so I'll, I'll take, you know, this and a, and a soda. And the lady's like, okay, and she goes to grab it. I, I give her the money. You give her the money. 
So as soon as he grabs him, as soon as the lady grabs the money and turns around, this old lady, this geriatric lady, just has a walker. She falls over that near a table, me. hits her head on the table, and starts bleeding. <laughs> and she's fell, she's fallen. She can't get up, just like the commercial, and bleeding all over the place. And everyone's like, "Oh, oh, what happened?" It's like, "Old lady fell. What do you think? That's going to happen <laughs> from time to time." Everyone stops what they're doing. Not just one person to help her. This is like 15 people. The lady wasn't one of those 500-pound ladies. One person would have sufficed to pick her up. Yeah. So. To break her head. Probably. I don't she know. broke her head. I know that. <laughs> Jeez. So we're waiting there, and of course I'm a little bit more PC at, at this moment because I, I see the old lady, and you know she needs help. I forget. Brandon ordered this. <laughs> the lady who was holding the money actually went to go help, and he goes. Hey, what about my soda? <laughs> <laughs> no, I say, can I get my soda, please? Mm-hmm. And no, the, you didn't say, you said, hey, what about my soda? And the lady just kind of looks at me like the, the, the vendor lady. She like looks at me, <laughs> and then I say, can I just get my money back then? Because she still had my money in my hand. Uh-huh. And then so it's not not like I didn't care for the old lady. It's like there's eight thousand other people helping her that. They shouldn't need that much help. And I was like, she doesn't need all that attention on her. You know, just one or two people could help her. Throw some super glue on that wound and sew it up, shut it up. Yeah. The, the vendor, though, it, it happened in the vendor's place. Their no, like, like, say, I'm the vendor, you're me. Right. It happened, like, where the good heart case is. Yeah, it, it didn't happen at her table. Okay. So she wasn't, like, going to be held liable for it or anything. But it was just hilarious. Brandon, like, so dead set on getting that soda. I got it from someone else. And uh, the, you got your money back. Yeah, she handed it right back to me and went to go. A lot of people actually fell down at that convention. There was one guy dressed up as a Wii remote, <laughs> which is the worst fucking costume idea ever. Big old stick Wii remote had it all over his body. Of course, he's gonna fall over. It's just not as hilarious as the old lady falling over there. Was that the Radisson like uh, on what like art expo? Yeah, I fought there a couple times. Mm-hmm. That's her. Uh, my next story... Was the soda good? It was very good. It was ice cold. Yeah, the one she had was warm. Yeah. It sounded pretty ice cold. <laughs> yeah, the whole uh, scenario. The whole <laughs> pretty ice cold. Next uh, is a story about Las Vegas. Uh, Nick and I went to the Valley of Fire last time we came. That sounds awesome. Yeah, it is. It's real awesome. It's a national park that has uh, it's a long trail and it's about 15 spots throughout this long trail you could stop and look at mountains and there's huge rocks that are like purple and black and orange it's different colors to take pictures of it when we go right yeah uh, it's, it's amazing and so uh, on the way there for some reason I had forgotten the name of some characters in Final Fantasy 3 I knew I remember uh, Vixen Wedge but there's a third one <laughs> and I could not remember who it was who, Biggs? Yeah, no, Biggs and Wedge, I knew. Oh. Or, or maybe it was Chrono Trigger. Yeah, it was Chrono Trigger, because Biggs and Wedge are in Chrono Trigger as well. And I couldn't remember the third person. I called either you or Matt, and you got it right off the bat, like uh, Pete in the um, <laughs> Millennium Fair. And then, I, oh, that's right, it's Pete. And so um, Nick just looked at me like, freak. <laughs> I'm still, I'm still doing the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, weren't they in Star Wars? Basin? Probably. Well, the, th- the, the thing was, it had nothing to do with anything that we were doing or, or, or had even discussed. It just popped up into your head that you had to know these three characters' names. <laughs> and and I they were like minor characters. They yeah. pop up for like maybe a minute out of a 60 hour long game. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, I don't remember what my obsession was over it, but it happened. It hit me when we were in the second stop spot, uh, the second location of the trail, <laughs> where you actually got to climb up these stairs to this huge rock. And I was on top of there. I was like, oh, this is cool. And then I looked down, and also my legs started shaking because there's no guardrails. It's just stairs going down. And I was like, oh. I don't remember. I don't know if I crawled down or how I got down, but I eventually got down, and then I then that came into my head. I was like, how do I know who is who's the third person? I eventually called Brad and figured it out. But um, that's probably why um, why I do pretty good in that that sports thing is because whenever I hear a fact, I try to remember it, 
And that, for some reason, that Vig's way, because then Pete, I couldn't remember it, and that's what bugged me. <laughs> um, yeah, and, we're good at remembering facts, but... If we didn't hear it, we don't know it. Yeah. I don't know how I got cross-checked yeah, on that last fucker. one. <laughs> that, that, I, I, I was thinking, as soon as I heard hit, I was just like, it's either cross-check or... Um, Shucking or whatever, I don't know. Shucking? <laughs> don't they do shucking when they when they go by and they're like, boom, that's a shuck? It's just called checking. Checking, checking that's what it's okay. Shucking is like a corn. Right, when you that shuck sounds seashells. like something you do like playing like, I don't know, like lacrosse or something like that. Yeah. I don't know. And so uh, once we finished the Valley of the Fire, uh, we went to this fireworks stand. Do you remember that? Yeah. We went to the fireworks stand and I Got, I bought the biggest firework possible. I was like, I'm going to blow this up. We're all going to be there and blow it up. It was a huge rocket. And I, this is going to be tight. So I'm waiting for like days, weeks go by. And then uh, this actually ties us into our my next story. But we eventually get together. It's um, Brad, myself, Aaron, Nick, Alvan, and I think our little brother, Matt. Yeah, and that was there. And we're like, let's light this firework off. So we got on White Street in Rio Linda. Dyer Lane. Dyer Lane. And uh, we, there's no... Dyer road. Lane is like a ghost road. I mean, it's pitch black. It winds for a couple miles. Brandon and I actually saw a black mist shining <laughs> above some trees. And we got freaked out because yeah. we thought it was a ghost or a specter. Vampire or something. It was, it was crazy. Yeah. In the nighttime. Don't go di to di Dyer Lane at night. You'll die. The thing I liked about <laughs> Dyer Lane is it kind of looked like daytime, but it was at night. So, like, there was petrified wood. It was white. It was, like, you could see really well, uh, even though it was night. Because we had night vision. We were vampires. <laughs> but uh, we took this firework to Dyer Lane, and we were like, this is going to be awesome. They're, this is going to make so much noise. You better run. Oh, I remember this. Yeah, so I can't remember who lights it. I think it was you or Alvan. Yeah, I, I want to say it was Alvan. Uh, he runs up and lights it, and we're standing back by Brad's van, and we're all huddled, and all of a sudden, it just starts going off, and it's just like a dud. A oh, like sparkler. It sucked so bad. Mm -hmm. I was so disappointed. <laughs> I was like, I got piss on myself for this? Yeah. Because <laughs> I, I, I had to go to the bathroom, and I um, was trying to hurry, so I, I whipped it out, went... And I didn't get a shake at all, and I put it back in, and I was like, fuck, there's drippage. <laughs> so the, my final tell is actually going to, uh, you heard our, uh, we, we had referred to ourselves back in episode 10 uh, as uh, Crisis, Torment, Adversary, and Cain. And we actually, we'd like to talk about how that came to be and our first adventure as these four characters. Uh, we were all getting together. Uh, I can't remember the occasion, maybe because Matt was home. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> we wanted to, uh, I believe I, I was like, let's go out on Brad's farm because he lived on this 40-acre wood or 34-acre forest with, that his father-in-law owned. And like, let's just go out there with weapons and just Maybe we'll see a coyote and kill it yeah, or something. Yeah, maybe we'll just walk around and have an adventure. And I had sent at night time. Yeah, at night time. I mean that when the fog comes in. Oh, it's tight. And so I had sent a text to everyone. I believe saying, "Think of an alter name, alter ego name for yourself, something to that effect." <laughs> and I was, and I was like, uh, debating on chaos. Just these like basically terms that are synonymous with fear, uh, or uh, not just fear, just unsettling so uh, I we all got together and I you know like I said I, I take crisis Brad said torment Matt said cha uh, chaos I was like well I'm glad I didn't pick chaos and uh, Aaron had taken adversary Nick Kane of course can we explain the reason why we took the name uh, yeah that'd be cool yeah so I picked my name torment because uh, when I used to drive around with my wife or little scenarios I would actually find like an old lady or whatever driving next to me and I'd like go go right in front of her then I'd go like heck of slow like just to <laughs> just to mess with her <laughs> or if there's someone honking at me um, at the behind me because I'm like not going over the speed limit I like brake check them and there'll be a car next to me so I can't get over and then 
<laughs> I'll even go slower and create a roadblock. So you pace the car so it can't get around. Yeah, oh. and it just was pissing off. He was just throwing his hands in there while he was driving. It's like, come on, man, come on. <laughs> and so I, I uh, brake checked him again. Uh, just things like that, and Karen's like, you just love to torment people. <laughs> so torment was an obvious choice for me. Uh, I chose the adversary because uh, I felt like Christianity was forced on a lot of people, and uh, adversary is what uh, Satan means, and my name starts with two A's, so I, I just started adversary with two A's out here. It was kind of a nice little fit. And I took Kane simply because Kane is the name of my favorite character from the Final Fantasy series. Uh, Kane Highwind, I believe his name is, mm-hmm. from uh, Final Fantasy IV. The Dragoon. The Dragoon, that's right. That was my that was my ability as well. Same as Kane's ability with the jump ability. And and when Nick was Kane, he jumped like 50 feet in the air. It was amazing. Yeah. It was incredible. <laughs> Yeah. Left a large impression in the ground. Though. How did you explain that to your father and mom? <laughs> I just said shit happened. <laughs> He's like, what do you got? What do you guys do out in the field with those swords? <laughs> shit happens. <laughs> <laughs> Better left you not knowing. Uh, so I picked Crisis because uh, no matter where there is, no matter where there, where, wherever civilization is, there's always going to be some sort of crisis. But within that crisis, you could either delve deeper into the the crisis, and uh, or you could uh, create an opportunity out of it to to save Be yourself. Beneficial. Yeah. So uh, I just took that double edge of not not only being the crisis, but also the savior and opportunity of a situation. And Matt picked chaos with a K, spelled it K H O A S. And then our, our friend Alvan was there, and we said, Alvan, don't let us down. You have to, yeah, you have to get into this. And so obviously he took it as a joke, and uh, he picked a name that was pretty stupid. <laughs> uh, obviously I, I, stupid. Uh, I believe he was into the. He's into like the, all the mafia stuff, the mafia movies, and. Uh, you know, what you stated is Hegel's dialectic. It's probably the most uh, influential theory of how change comes about. You have two competing things, ideas that go up against each other, and whatever part of it survives is what moves the conversation forward. So basically all progression is based on some kind of conflict between two opposing forces. So uh, Alvan, he says, I'm going to be Gorgonzola. And I look at him... I was like <laughs> disgusted. I was. I was like, that is stupid. But you know what? In, in retrospect, every party needs a comic relief. <laughs> every party needs that character. Without him doing that, it, it made the story so much better with him being <laughs> That's that. That's true. Yeah. True. So uh, we ended up saying your name is not going to be Gorgonzola. Your name <laughs> is going to be Gorgon. Uh, uh, one of the uh, there are three Gorgons in Greek mythology. One was Medusa, and she had two sisters. So we said you're Gorgon because Gorgonzola's gay. Yeah, and so Gorgon is short for Gor- Gorgonzola. So we eat. did you ever find those uh, pictures? I have them on my Wii. Not okay, my old one. Okay, so uh, we each picked up a blade, a weapon of choice. Uh, I picked. I have the Buster Sword that is a simulation of Cloud's sword from Final Fantasy. And I decided to wield that. Um, Nick, what did you take? Well, Kane always used a spear. Uh, you you used that hella long sword. I thought so. I thought it was a sword. The broad really sword. Really long, really long, yeah. yeah, it had a skull at the bottom. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's right. That does happen. Right? I hit, I started with some kind of sword, and then I gave it up and was went without a weapon. I, I think you were barehanded. He was like a monk. A, like a monk. monk and then it, I think in uh, in our second hunt, we'll get, we'll talk about it. You actually picked up a staff, like a yeah, bow staff. Okay. And uh, I had a cookery blade as my first weapon. Uh, it was a like a very long knife, very sharp. We actually sliced watermelons with it. Brandon threw an apple at me one time, and I sliced it into three pieces with one cut. It was it was dumb because it was super sharp. And Brad cut a watermelon with it, and not only did it cut the watermelon, it cut its countertop in like three different spots. And of course, his wife did not like that. 
No. Just that same. And the, the Kukri had speed holes in it. It had like five holes that were speed holes, so it swung even faster. So uh, I can't remember what sword Gorgon took. He just took a sword. It's a basic sword. Yeah. yeah. And these, are, sword. these aren't sword. these aren't cardboard swords. They're metal swords. You know, we're not the, like those LARPing guys who use foam swords like on role models. We use actual bladed weapons when we LARP. But um, Matt or Chaos, he had, did he have the he had the Wolverine claws? Oh, he had the Wolverine claws. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the Punisher, I think it was called. Uh, so we started out on this adventure. We left the house. Our moods changed. We dove into our characters, and uh, we just became other people. It, it was like night and day. I couldn't explain it, how it like went over me, and it was like a, a whole new person. It was like midnight. We went out at midnight, and the, the fog was there, like Silent Hill. It was nothing but dirt and wood and field and loveliness. And we started... Uh, the field of eternity. Yeah, yes. it was nice. And uh, we started interacting like... Oh, there's an orc over there, and we, you know, we fought the orc. You know, we, we swung our sword at it. Uh, there was turned, a scuttlebutt at the meat packing plant, wasn't there? That was uh, the third um, one. The third hunt. Third hunt. Yeah, Vlad. Um, <laughs> we'll get to Vlad. Uh, but um, we start. We, you know, we uh, started attacking this orc. We it was turn-based attack. Uh, sometimes the enemy would hit us. We, you know, uh, take damage. Our sword would drop and we'd fall on the ground. Someone would give us a potion, but then we we started getting more and more into it. Alvan, of course, or Gorgon, was sitting there swinging, you know, <laughs> cutting grass, cutting grass <laughs> with a sword, you know, off in the off, you know, very the, uninterested. Yeah, he couldn't, hold, he couldn't hold his attention. He was just like, "When the fuck is this going to be over?" <laughs> so of course, the more we were doing it, the more we liked it, and the more the world was forming around us. We went over to um, Donkey Dan's area, the border where our, our property left off and a new property began, was held up by a little small two foot fence with some barbed wire. And we crawled over it. No, you you struck it down with the Buster blade. Oh, is that what I did? You cut it and it like and it like made a little bit, <laughs> pushed it down towards the ground, and we were able to just walk over it. Okay. <laughs> so then we invaded someone else's territory, you know, being careful, thinking that it's. Uh, the lair of Belmac. Uh, <laughs> what was he? A giant? God, how do you remember that name? <laughs> <laughs> Something I can't forget. That, that's like so special to me. Th this story is like I remember every detail because of what happened with Belmac and with Gorgon. Yeah, that was just like the best, one of the best movies of my life, <laughs> comedy style, comedy wise. I mean, <laughs> but we ended up going into the other property by the creek. We saw some uh, naked maidens. Yeah, that's right. We did. We saw. Uh, they, they were, it was actually like a uh, porno mag that you know people had ripped the pages oh, yeah, out of. <laughs> and, and me not knowing that the bones would actually come on them, I oh. picked him up and put them in my pocket so I could save him as a souvenir. <laughs> Do you still have them? Hell no. Because <laughs> when I took them out, it was like. This is fucking cum on it. <laughs> <laughs> I threw it away and disaffected my counter. Yeah, we, we saw some naked maidens, which we, which were, was a porno mag, and the bums who camped out there used them. And uh, Gorgon didn't want to oh, want to take any home, any of the naked maidens home. <laughs> and so uh, we passed the naked maidens, have a few more battles. You're really getting into it. Like when you're out there, it's hard to explain just this change in you that you take, and you know. Uh, with the atmosphere and the mist and the the monsters that you hear and see but aren't really there. So we get to the creek uh, at the edge of the property and we, uh, I, I can't remember if we fought Belmac or if he, we were just trying to summon him. Yeah. But we were trying to summon Belmac, the, the troll, the bridge troll, right. to aid us in battle. <laughs> <laughs> and so adversary belts out, he pleads. Belmac, we need your help. If you could hear us, give us a sign. Show us something. Then all of a sudden, at that exact moment, a frog croaks. <laughs> and and Alvan Gorgon, Gorgon's just like, are you fucking serious? <laughs> like, why give them more fuel to add to their game? And to sh make them think that Belmac is going to come and assist them in battle, which he 
obviously did. Yeah. <laughs> we wouldn't have beat the boss without Belmac's help. Yeah. <laughs> so adversary ended up summoning Belmac. Kicked the shit out of the boss monster we were fighting. We were all down too. We were all on a knee. We were had like one hit point left. There's no way we could beat it. And then Belmac came to our rescue. <laughs> And so after we you know we get down we we have we have enlisted Belmac in our uh, repertoire. Uh, we would call upon him later on, and we get back to um, Brad's house, and we're just like we have to do this again. It was like the feeling of doing it was just like something new and ambitious and nothing I ever felt before. Kind of like the podcast. Yeah. Did Gordon make it through the event? Gordon make it through the adventure, or did he die? I'm I not thought sure. he abandoned them. Part. <laughs> oh, did he leave? I think he. I know he threw through. his sword and almost hit someone. A fellow adventurer with his sword. <laughs> <laughs> the carelessness of Gordon. Yeah, I think he, he was banished. <laughs> <laughs> Needless to say, go, spoiler alert: Gordon never showed up in the future. <laughs> <homes. laughs> yeah, we called them hunts because they were always hunting for um, monsters or. Uh, quest to, to accomplish. We were actually trying to find some coyotes because coyotes would come down from the creek and actually make these god awful noises like cries of infants and be like, oh, there's the coyotes again. And we never ran into one. Yeah. So after we actually we got back to the house and we took pictures with all the um, weapons and posed with them and uh, have them documented. So hopefully we can get get those up on the web page. Hmm. You see us with our weapons. All right, so that's going to end episode eleven of Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. Um, this is Brandon. This is Brad. This is Nick. This is Aaron. Happy hunting, everyone. See you later.